Hi, I'm Ashley with Accomplish Quilting, and in this video I'm going to talk about a few different methods of masking with the Autopilot Mach 3. And so I've quilted out a sample, um, and then I have it queued back up. So I stitched it out, and then I changed the stitching back to green on the screen. So you can see a couple of different methods I did. Um, perfect. So there's a little bit of glare on the screen, I apologize. We'll get closer up to it in a little bit when I go into the methods. Um, so with masking, um, when you are quilting, so this, what I'm talking about masking in this video is specifically um, concerning motifs, digital motifs that you might have in the system that you wanna add to a quilt. And so Kim McKee, if you're watching, if you're out there, um, this is an idea inspired by a recent quilt that you did that I was really impressed with. Um, and so I wanted to bring up masking techniques for other people that might have projects on their Mach 3 similar to yours. So with masking, when you have a motif in the system, so my examples um, that I'll show you in a second are a shark and a cat. And I have an edge to edge in the background. And let's say on this quilt, I wanted one of these motifs, and it could be anything, maybe you wanna add a heart or a flower or a campfire. Um, to a quilt, some beautiful design that you want into an edge to edge, how would you do that? Um, and so in a later video, we'll talk about how to mask things already on a quilt. Um, but right now, again, this is masking with motifs. So I've added uh, two shark motifs and two cat motifs using different methods. And you can see some results are cleaner than others. And so that's what I wanted to address here. So on the screen, and hopefully the glare won't be too much, um, on this screen, this first cat, so I have an edge to edge in the background, this first cat was masked just the shape of the cat. So basically I clicked this shape, went to the mask tool, clicked build, and just used the motif itself to cut the object. When I cut the object from the edge to edge, I did not choose sew mask outline. So basically what I was hoping to do was create a space to put that object in. And so I created the space, you can see the outline of that object on the screen, and then I didn't have the details. Um, so the details of the cat, its face, its whiskers, did not come through with the mask. So I have the perfect shape for it, but then I gotta take the perfect same size object and put it back and try to line it up so I can get those inner details back. And so the result of this, and I did get it lined up perfectly on the screen. I hope you saw that before I grabbed it. Um, there we go. So the result on the quilt, if you take a look at the quilt, is that by the time it did the edge to edge, so it did the motif, it did the edge to edge, and it didn't line up perfectly. So you can see that there's some overstitching from the edge to edge. My motif design came out nice, but it didn't line up perfectly. So I don't much like that method. Um, so then I was thinking, okay, maybe that method didn't work well because I had to bring the cat shape back. Maybe if I had just done the outline. So that leaves out some motifs, right? Because the reason I had to bring the cat back is because of the details inside. Um, so had I checked sew mask outline, I would still be missing the eyes and the face and the whiskers. So then I chose a different shape. I chose the shark. And with the shark, there's no inner details. Um, and I selected sew mask outline. And even with sew mask outline, when you check continuous sew, what continuous sew means is every time the edge to edge meets the object, it follows the edge of the object until it gets to another point in the edge to edge. So when this line comes up, it's gonna do a loop and then go back into the edge to edge. So you end up with little sections of your edge to edge that have parts of the shape. And so when you, that was what this object was without sew mask outline, you can see how the edge to edge continues until it hits a part of the cat. On this shark over here, See, it matches exactly perfect on the screen. You can see that it did continuous sew around it, so the pattern continues, 
and then it sewed the outline right over that and it was supposed to match perfectly. Now this is only a 21 inch space. So there's not a lot of shifting, um, but there's enough shifting in this quilt that it still came up a little off. Now if my threads blended, it might not be as obvious. And if my fabric in the background was busier, I could probably get away with it. It would be okay, but still not precise. So what are we left with? If you have an object you wanna put in there, sewing the mask outline could leave you a little off. Um, not sewing the mask outline and bringing the shape back could lead to a little bit off. So my favorite way of masking and adding a motif to a quilt is using the echo tool. And so this is a hidden gem. When you think of the echo tool, you don't think, oh, I can use that for masking because with the echo tool, you end up with echoes outwards. Um, and so there, it does talk about the echo tool in this booklet. Um, this is the advanced autopilot training um, that I think Jeff talked to you, talked about. Um, but like in here, it talks about making a, a square by echoing and the echo and what happens with the echo tool is shown right here. So you can see the echo out, you know, when you think of echoing, you think I'm echoing around applique and it's gonna be a nice fill behind the object. Um, if you had a, an embroidery in a block and you echo it around it. So echoing doesn't first come to mind when you think of masking. And so applying the echo tool to masking, this shape down here, I echoed it once and then used the echo as my cookie cutter or mask and then dropped the line. And with this shape, I used the echo as a mask and did continuous sew without the outline. And so what you end up with is this beautiful, and you can set the distance whatever you want. So I'll show you in a, in a second on the computer how to make that, but I set the distance to a quarter of an inch. And so you end up with this beautiful kind of buffer or puffy layer between the object you wanna highlight and your edge to edge. And so this works well with objects that don't have details inside like the shark or like the cat. So now these details are highlighted and you can see the shape of the cat and what he's doing with his tail. And on this one, I did check mark, sew mask outline, and it still, it still lined up really great using the echo tool up here. Um, so how do we do that? If I go to, this is a copy of that project just before um, these methods were done. So I have the two objects, I have my shark here and my cat here. And so the cat, if you're interested in the cat pattern, that comes from a collection from Forever and Stitches. So they have some digital patterns uh, on their website available for purchase. And then this shark is actually a drawing of my own that I drew in the system. So I digitized my design right in Autopilot Mach 3 and that was originally for this project back here. And this subject <laughs> and what I did on this um, is for another video, another day. So this is a fun project, but I just wanted you to see where that shark came from. Um, so back to this project. Clay said that it would be fun to use for schools with mascots or baby blankets. Absolutely. Yes. Oh my gosh. Great idea. There are so many things you can do with the autopilot for creativity or business or yeah, signs and baby quilts, doing initials, so they don't always have to be motifs, you can do words too. Um, so I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna go to the echo tool. So the echo tool, if you have your default colors set, the echo tool is usually like a teal or, um, what's that special, cyan, I guess is what it's called. Um, it's kind of a tealy color with a swirl. So that's the echo. And if you hover over, I don't know if you know this little tip, if you hover over the tools for a second, it tells you exactly what they are. So if you hover over this one, it says echo right there. So I'm gonna open that tool and then we're left with some options. So on the right side over here, you have echo type. Um, you can choose from ripple or spiral. Hi, Cindy. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Kim. Oh, she said hi to Randy. <laughs> 
Um, you could choose from ripple or spiral. So with ripple, what you would think of is dropping a rock in a pond. And so when you drop a rock in the water, you see ripples. And ripples are full, complete circles or, you know, whatever shape the waves are. But they're complete. There's, there's no um, connection to the next one. With spiral, you start close to the object and then get farther out. Um, spiral will cover, um, sp when we talk specifically about echo, for the purpose of masking in motifs, we're going to use the ripple because we want one full ring that is in the shape of whatever we choose. So I have ripple selected and then you get to choose your distance. So how far away from that motif is the line or ripple going to be? And so again, on this sample that I sewed out, I chose a quarter inch. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now if I wanted to change that, I would just use the keypad. Um, so I can do 0 0.75 um, or even smaller, you know, 0 0.1, you know, whatever. But I like quarter inch, quarter inch is a hot number in the quilting world. Um, so quarter inch, and then you get to choose the echo direction. Again, those, these tools and these things are useful for different things with echoing. For the purpose of masking, we're only going to echo the outside of the object. And then echo corner type. So if it's going around a sharp turn like the tail of the shark, do I want it to round off? Do I want it to come to a miter? Um, or do I want it to be square? And I generally choose for masking for it to round off the edges. So I choose round. And then the number of repeats is going to be one because I only need one ring. So I'll bring this over here so you can see it right next to those options so you know what I selected over here. So I have the shark, I'm gonna hit echo, done, that fast. So this is my echo and underneath it is my shark. And then here's my cat. So again, all I'm gonna do is just click echo and notice I didn't have to exit the tool and go back in. So if you're doing multiples, you can just click them. Um, so there's my echo, and I don't have to worry about this inner piece. Uh, once I turn it into a mask, that's not going to matter, Does that it? bubble in there. Yeah. Okay, so I have these perfect bubbles. One of the other reasons, and I'm just going to bring in one more cat so you can see what happens. Um, some of you, if you've ever practiced with the masking tool, so this is a sidebar. If you've ever practiced with the masking tool, you'll quickly realize when you use a mask, so I clicked build, I turned this cat into a mask, I know it's ready to cut because it's red, so I click on the shape and I click accept. As soon as I click out of that tool, my object is gone. So the shape is there and it used it as a mask, but as soon as it's used as a mask, it disappears. So you can see the face is there, and I'm done using it as a mask, and as soon as I click out, the cat's gone. So if I had resized motif, my motif and wanted to bring it back in, I need to remember to make a copy first, if you're gonna be putting that shape back where you mask it. So the other reason I really like the echo method is because I don't need that echo after. I now have two objects, one for my mask, and one to be put in that place. So I'm, I don't need to remember to make a copy or anything. So here's the bubble or the echo from the shark. So all I'm gonna do is pick the spot where I want it in the pattern. I'm gonna go up to the mask tool and over here on the right, I'm gonna click build and it turns it purple. So a lot of people ask, what does the purple mean? Um, the purple is just a preview. So if you ever click an object and the mask does not work, so you'll actually see the color start to build. So it'll try to turn purple um, or it might be green. It'll be green and then it goes to purple. And if you see the green kind of disappearing like water out of holes in a bucket, it's because the pattern's not closed. So the reason the mask tool has this purple is that it's a preview. So this is basically the computer saying, is that the object you wanted to use as a mask? If it is, 
So yes, that's exactly the shape I wanted. You have to click on the edge of the object to turn it red. Now that it's red, red means it is ready to cut. Red is ready. Red is ready to cut. So now that it's ready to cut, I can on the right side of the screen, check my options. I want it to mask the inside. So masking the inside means I'm getting rid of the inside stuff, which is exactly what I want because that's where I'm going to place the shark. And then for this first one, I'm going to uncheck sew mask outline so you can see the difference. But continuous sew, 99% of the time I am selecting yes, please continuous sew. Um, because otherwise, every single time this edge to edge touches um, that pattern, if I did not have continuous sew on, every single one of these, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 times would be tie-offs. So for that just one shape, that's pretty small. It's only two inches by three inches. Um, I would have 12 tie-offs for that. Another side note, how I knew the size of that really quickly. Um, when you're selected on an object, and it, it usually doesn't matter what tool you're in, right up here, those numbers that are constantly changing, that's a quick preview of what size. So I can be in the mask tool and as long as this is selected, that's gonna give me the dimensions. So that's another side quick tip that I, I look at often. So continuous sew and then notice except is not lit up. So you say, Ashley, you told me red is ready but it's not giving me the accept option. The reason is over here, it says my mask is my echo. So the echo is the mask but the pattern says none. So the, the machine is asking me, okay, I know what you're using to cut, but you're not telling me what to cut. So I have to click the background. So once the background is clicked, it's dark green, and notice it shows it up. Um, in this case, it's calling it a masked pattern. The reason it's called masked pattern and not edge to edge is because I had given you this little preview with the cat earlier. Um, and so the system just comes up with its own name. So because I had masked that, as a sample for you, it named it that. But I know that's what I selected because it's dark green. So at this point, the accept button lit up and I can choose accept. Once I choose accept, I can see what happened. I can still, if that's not what I wanted, I can click undo and move it and do something else. Um, but if that's what I wanted, I just click the pattern, click accept, and then I'm gonna get out of the echo tool, or I mean out of the mask tool. So this is the result of the mask. Thank you, cameraman, Randy. This is the result of the mask without continuous, or without sew mask outline. And so in this case, it did choose a new path. So my start dot is now here. Um, the machine automatically calculates what the best route is. So don't be surprised if you see your starts and stops kind of switch locations. Um, it's just trying to find the best path to follow with the least amount of jumps. So now I have the perfect space to drop that shark in. Oh, I missed it. Oh, let me redo that. Undo. So there's the shark that I used to echo and I can move that into that beautiful spot that was created for that shape. So I have my shark floating around in my edge to edge. This is a lot more evident. This is a pretty loose edge to edge for this example because I'm using such small shapes, but this becomes even more evident, um, the bubble around it when you use really dense patterns. So for the next example, I have the echo around the cat. I'm going to build my mask. I'm gonna click build and then I'm gonna place it somewhere. And this time I'm going to select sew mask outline. <clears throat> Choose my pattern and click accept. And now you'll see the outline around it. So if I remove that shark so you can see the two differences, this is masking with the echo with sew mask outline. And then this is masking without so mask outline still creates the perfect spot and the perfect shape 
Um, but one of them has a crisper look. Do, I mean, that's an opinion. You know, it might be, might this might be what you wanted. Um, and sometimes it is. Sometimes I do use that method or sometimes I do add that outline. So if you're going for a really dramatic, this is the motif, this is something I'm trying to highlight, then Sew Mask Outline is the way to go because that outline adds drama um, and draws your eye to that shape. Um, whereas if you're just kind of dropping in, like if this were an ocean quilt and I'm dropping in sharks that are just kind of supposed to be blending in with the scenery, as sharks do in the wild, right? Then I might not want to choose the outline portion because it's supposed to be, um, in my mind, if I were designing that project, it would be, oh, there's a shark, there's a shark. Oh, cool, there's another one. So it's not meant to be a dramatic, there it is, um, which is the result that you get when you use the outline. And so now that you've seen how to do it on the screen, we can take a look back over here at what those results were sewn. So, this cat, again, was using an echo at a quarter inch with sew mask outline on. And then this bottom one down here was without sew mask outline on. So I have some open areas. 